Tim and this is Tim B at Sea and we are just coming into the gate. We've just come under the Hellgate Railroad Bridge over here. Here's the old Triborough Bridge but I think they call it something else like the RFK Memorial or something like that. I'm not sure what it is but to us it will always be the Triborough Bridge. But anyway we're coming here we're fighting about almost three knots of tide two and a half three knots of tide coming at us. We've got a light barge we're just coming back from uh, from New Haven and you can see there's a unit up there going through right by the Gracie Mansion right now and that's uh, another unit. The two of us and another unit behind me have all been running on a slow bell down uh, the sound just so uh, that would be Long Island Sound so that we'd all wait for the end of the, the it's not the end of the tide it's what the, we call the end of the hop of the tide. The hop of the tide is where it's, it's, it's running its fastest. And, uh, so that's why we're uh, that we all ran slow so we could get here now and only have to do with two and a half or three knots of tide instead of five, five or knots of tide. You wouldn't think that much of a difference would make a big difference, but it makes a huge difference. It's uh, interesting, I kept thinking we we're going to have these thunderstorms coming by. It's, the weather's been unsettled here for the last two hours or so. It was nice and sunny before and then got all dark and stormy and the wind blew up to 20 knots for a little while, but now it's only 7 knots. And even if it comes, usually when, it, it, very rarely is the wind in the East River an issue for us. Uh, it's usually only the tide that's an issue for us, so we have to watch it. And once again, just so that we, we've talked about this before, but uh, there's pe pe people that always want to correct me in the comments and they say, oh no, tide is vertical and uh, current is horizontal. Um, yep, yep, you're right. That's exactly right. And you can keep saying that, but if you work out here, you'll be one of the only people that say current. I guess they say current in like the river, the river boats. I think they talk about that because they don't really aren't subjected to tide. But uh, all of us talk about tide when we're really talking about current. And uh, if you want to correct me on that, you are absolutely right. You are you are right, but wrong in uh, in, in our circles. <laughs> So when you hear me say, I'm going to go up here and the tide catches the stern and pushes it this way and the tide pushes the bow the other way and the, what, what we're really talking about is the current. But it's a cur current as a result of tide. So this is Mill Rock over here just off to the right hand side there. Uh, looks like you can see some trees there in the middle. Um, I've talked about this before as well too, but Hellgate, not to be confused with Hell's Gate. Um, I believe it's it's Elgat. El, it, it, I think that means a uh, dangerous waterway in uh, in uh, Dutch, because this would be. New Amsterdam, you know, uh, New York was New Amsterdam before that. I'm trying to listen to the, I'm trying to steer, listen to the radio and talk to you guys at the same time. So if I sound a little disjointed, that's what it is. <laughs> you guys get the least of the priorities. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, it it's always been really tough. And if you look all the way over to the right, that's the Harlem River coming down, coming in here to where Mill Rock is. Right now we're, we're at the beginning of Long Island Sound and then we'll be looking down two different forks of the East River and uh, when we come around the corner to, to the left. So anytime you get at large bodies of water together, uh, they, usually, they usually get all messy 
you know, Cape of, you know, when you think of the Cape of Good Hope, Cape Horn, even, uh, you know, uh, uh, Cape Hatteras, you know, separating the lower part of the Atlantic versus the upper part there when the Gulf Stream comes there, everything gets all nasty. Well, that's usually why this is a, a, a you, this is a very treacherous place. You've got a lot of currents and they're doing a lot of different things. And for years, I mean like, like hundreds of years, ships would notoriously go aground here and uh, Mill Rock, the play of this little island on the right hand side, was apparently much more, I don't know where, how far it was, but I would imagine pretty close to where we are right now. And they had a couple different attempts to remove all of it, but it's hard, they can't like do any dredging or anything because there's so much current and so much water flows through here. So they ended up tunneling underneath it and this is like at the turn of the century, in the late 1800s, I believe. I, there's a wonderful article about this that I've passed along to some people. I should probably put it. I should probably put a link to it somewhere. But anyway, if you're interested, write me in the comments and I'll, I'll find the article and send it to you. But anyway, at the time, they tunneled underneath Mill Rock and they set off at, uh, the largest. Uh, civilian explosion the world had ever seen or some 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 claim to fame like that and rocks were blown miles into the air and anyway the good news is that now it's a much safer place to navigate I had said this in another video that when I came down here I can't believe how New York I've just been away for a couple of years and everything's changing these buildings weren't here before and the ball field right here at Hallett's Point right there um, last couple of years that was all torn up so it looked like they were I, I don't know the story behind it but it looked like they were reclaiming dirt like it was contaminated or something like that but I was like oh that's so sad I used to love that ball field I come over here hot summer night and you see everybody playing ball and it's kind of cool you know and uh, anyway uh, it's back so that's cool <laughs> okay so now we're right at Hallis Point here or the gate and you can see uh, Roosevelt Island. They're just off at like 10 o'clock. And there's one leg of the East River on one side that we actually never go down. A lot of people ask me about going down there. And I gotta tell you, in, in my career, I've never been down there. And uh, I don't think that we have the air draft. Or, I don't know. For a long time they had, uh, they may still have them too, but they had uh, turbines installed in there to capture uh, Energy from the tidal current. But on the right hand side, you can see a tent, a flagpole, and a tent. And that tent is in front of what's being blocked by a bunch of beautiful willows there. But that's Gracie Mansion. Gracie Mansion is the uh, home of who uh, ever happens to be the mayor at the time, or one particular mayor, his wife. <laughs> one mayor got divorced and his wife got to stay there. <laughs> I only laugh because, uh, well, you guys would know my history. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice when somebody else has to saddle the burden. <laughs> but it looks really weird. It's only uh, 1629, 1630 right now. I can write that in the log, 1630 at the gate. And the colors are weird. It's like looks like it could be a thunderstorm and heavy rain at any moment. So this guy that's ahead of us here, I've been running, we've both been running at like about four knots down the sound, and I had put my six minute line on him, so in other words I stayed six minutes behind him, and then when we got closer to the gate, um, we had to start adjusting our speed because we we're starting to get this opposing tide So we had to increase the engine speed, but that would keep our relative speed the same and I actually let him get way ahead of us so that in the event that he had a problem in the gate um, He wouldn't come back on top of me or we'd have time to work it out before then or if he got had to hold up for somebody I wouldn't be I wouldn't be right up against him and even though saying that, we're making a good speed right now. We're doing 7.6 knots, and uh, I think that's going to slow down when we get a little closer here. We're in a little bit, bit of an eddy, but uh, so we'll probably
probably slow down where, where you get to where he is I think we'll probably be doing like six knots or something like that but uh, right now at this rate his speed and our speed will be to him in about six to eight minutes may we be on top of him so that probably means that I'm in the eddy and I'm going fast yeah now it says I'm doing 8.2 and that's just because this is one of those yeah, tidal yeah, eddies that we're in once we get here I guarantee you we're gonna we're gonna slow down quite a bit it's funny I uh I had a conversation with somebody in the comments a while ago about the difference he said why do you use a six minute line why don't you use a ten minute line and I tried to explain it the best I could but I guess I wasn't able to articulate why as well as maybe some of you can but basically our uh hang on a second I'm listening to the guys up here he's making passing rangers for the ferry I think So anyway, um, I was trying to explain to that that yeah. the reason why you use a six minute line um, is because yeah, that's, that's one tenth one tenth of uh, of an hour, and that's much easier to do the math that we need to do to figure out where we're going to be, and uh, because they're. You know there's 60 minutes in an hour if there are 100 minutes in an hour we could definitely use 10. it's like why do you have a 10 minute line or a five minute line six is so random like, well no it's it, it's not really random we do that for a reason and i tried to explain all this and i think he wrote back yeah well i still think 10 would be better mm, okay put a 10 minute line on yourself <laughs> but we use a six minute line see that little ferry now coming by and uh what generally on the magazine purpose here he is right here on the purpose bring her on cap sounds good thank you very good so he's just checking to see if he needs to go slow if he were overtaking me i'd ask him for a slow bell and that's because the barge is light and uh, we, we move very independently of the barge the unit that's ahead of us i believe is a pinboat so that's an atv up there so they're locked in place but we aren't and so if they overtake us their wakes because of the the angle you can see his wake when he starts coming you'll see it's going to be hit by the bow of the barge but when they come the other way the first thing his weight hits is the stern of the tug and it hits it before it hits the stern of the barge so the tug starts to move independently of the barge and it messes us up so that's why we uh, are more concerned about overtaking wakes than we are about people that are meeting us in his case he could meet us throw a four foot wake and the barge would break it all up by the time it got back to the tug So some people are like, no, we're running about half throttle right now. And oh, by the way, I'm down to 5.8 knots. So we are through that eddy that I was telling you about that we sped up on. We we're doing over eight knots before. We're at 5.7 right now. And uh, I'm happy with that. We need to be, the, the berth that we're going to, one of our late berths, has some other uh, barges there. And they the dispatch called and said that I can't, they don't want me there before six o'clock because they need to get those other guys out so that we don't, if we go on the outside of them, then everyone will have to move. And so th this way, now you can see, you can see the wake over here of uh, this guy. As it comes over, you can see where it'll get busted up by the barge before it hits us. We'll still feel it, but it won't be anything like it would be if he was uh, overtaking us. So we're totally fine with that. Yeah, so, so running on a relatively slow bell because, um, and, and this would be very fast. Uh, I'm running about half throttle with the light barge right now. If there was no current at all, well, we could add about two and a half knots to this. So we'd be doing about, oh, let's see, that would be six, so about eight, eight and change we'd be doing um, if we weren't fighting the current. But we're fighting the current, and because of that, things, when you go against the current like this, um, you know the guys that work work on the rivers that watch 
watch the channel. They could probably explain this a lot better than I do because they have to deal with it all the time. But uh, you can you can push against the current, and that's fine. The problem is when things go bad, they go bad very quickly. So in other words, if we were going with the current and the barge started to take off to the left, the current would basically keep you from turning all the way around. But here we are pushing into the current. If the barge started to go to the left or to the right, the current would grab it and exacerbate it and it would just spin us right around in a circle. So you really have to be on top of it. So that's one of the reasons why if I can run at half throttle, um, I have half, you know, I have half of my horsepower I keep in my back pocket for reserve. So if something, I mean, I'm making, um, the, the time is good, I mean, everything's gonna be fine. We're gonna get to where we need to be at the time we need to be there. So why would I go any earlier? Well, you know, I could burn a lot more fuel and not have that extra piece in my back pocket if I need it. So it's, it, for an example, if the, if, you know, if something went wrong and it, the barge started to go one way or the other, I would want all the throttle I could to fight that tide. And um, having only used half of it, we can still do that. So that's a good thing. <laughs> Getting a little bit of drizzle out there now. If anyone's wondering, this is, uh, it's the 8th of, of September today. So. Still hot outside. Pretty soon I'm gonna to have to turn on the air conditioning. I have it off so you can hear me, but uh, my relief is gonna relieve me in an hour and uh, he's probably gonna want that air conditioning on. <laughs> I think I'm gonna want it on before then too. But anyway, Roosevelt Island to the left. Uh, Greensboro Bridge, 59th Street Bridge. Two names for the same thing, straight ahead. And you can see the cable car going across. And people have, have uh, New Yorkers came through and educated me. Apparently you cannot take the cable car all the way to, to uh, Central Park like I thought you could. But just goes to show you, I've been a victim of listening to sea stories. <laughs> but uh, the FDR, that's the, uh, all the brake lights you see over there. That's the uh, highway that runs on the East River over here. can't take it, it's getting too hot in here, so forgive me, but I gotta turn the air conditioning back on. Hopefully you can still hear. <laughs> oh, that feels good already. Let me show you this, coming up. Look down these, that looks so cool looking down here. <laughs> I don't know which one it is, but uh, one street, one of the avenues, I, I forget which one it is, but uh, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, my favorite astrophysicist, talks about that there's a, there's one street in Manhattan that on one day of the year, the light shines straight down the street perfectly. <laughs> the solstice, or yeah, I think it's the solstice. Anyway, I'm sure you New Yorkers know all about that. <laughs> if I, uh, the only time I stay in New York is when I stay with Cristalita. She's, uh, she seems to like the city. So I think you either have to grow up in a city or not. And uh, I like to visit a city, but oh, I just couldn't imagine living in one. <laughs> I don't know. I say that. I went to school in Madrid. And I absolutely love Madrid. Incidentally. I don't know if, yeah, you'll probably see this before I go, but in October, we're going to Madrid for a week. And, uh, maybe I'll have some video on the other channel if you guys want to see anything that we do in Madrid. I'm uh, pretty proud of this. I've lost uh, 30 pounds. I'm trying to lose another 15 to 20, but uh, I'll probably gain all of it back in the one week that I'm in Spain. For those that don't know, 
and uh, apologies to all my Italian friends, but I think Italian American food is very good, and I think that many American palates have gotten used to what they think of Italian food is really Italian American food, and I think a lot of people go to Italy thinking they're going to have this great food, and they do have great food, but it's not what they expect. But I can tell you that from all the places I've been to in the world, Spain, hands down, has the greatest food I've ever had in my life. <laughs> so, hopefully, uh, hopefully I won't gain too much weight over there. <laughs> Under the bridge just off just a little bit maybe at one o'clock I guess you could say you can see that's the uh, UN building and then in the gap between there I don't know if it shows up on camera or not but the World Trade Center is right there too and of course it's, it's all the way in the other side of Manhattan but you can see it right through here kind of cool shot anyway that's that the rest of this is going into the dock that's going to be, uh, I think, probably on the other watch. So this is just going to get long and drawn, drawn out more than it already is. I hope you guys like this. And uh, if you guys got anything out of it, please consider becoming a patron. Uh, you can be a patron for only two dollars a month. I don't charge by the uh, video or anything like that. Just charge by the month. And uh, and uh, if you want to show some love, really love it. That's great. You can also. Uh, you can also hit the super thanks button. And uh, I've been telling my crew when we get off the boat in Puerto Rico and we all fly home, we all meet in the airport. And uh, a couple of you out there have been kind enough to hit that super thanks button and it's allowed me to buy us a round of drinks before we all go home. <laughs> uh, if you haven't checked out SV Paquita, please do. We're having all kinds of fun there. I got some. Uh, be getting ready to go to the uh well by the time you see this it's gonna be right after we go to spain actually we're gonna be going to the annapolis boat show that should be fun and uh i've got all kinds of things happening with paquita paquita's uh she's uh in for a little minor refit so stick stay tuned to see how that goes and i'm gambling a little bit there's uh some things that i'm trying to do that if they work they're going to be amazing if they don't work it's just going to be a waste of time and money but stick around for that Put links in the description uh, and uh, to see SV Paquita. And if you're a mariner or want to become one, make sure you check out John over at marinercredentials.com. Put a link in the description. And he'll help you out with all the paperwork. You guys, thank you so much. Take care. Oh, and somebody told me that I'm not saying the links. Not only are they in the description, but I should say it. It's SV space Paquita. P-A-Q-U-I-T-A. Somebody said that I say it too quick and they couldn't find it. So that's for you, buddy. <laughs> Thank you so much. You guys take care, be safe, and I'll see you on the line.